Good morning, Boreda. Um, the Minister has set me up very nicely um, in the front end of her speech in terms of the things that I uh, will, will address. Um, it's two discrete presentations effectively today. I want to talk about the work that we are doing on Planning Policy Wales and the alignment process with the Wellbeing and Future Generations Act. And uh, then I'll talk about the work that we are doing at the moment in terms of preparing the national development framework. Uh, at the moment, they may seem like two parallel, unconnected pieces of work. But once we get the draft version of the national development framework out, and I'll talk more about that uh, subsequently, hopefully you will see the connections between these two very important pieces of work that uh, myself and the team are doing. So if I talk a little bit, first of all, about Planning Policy Wales and, importantly, its position and relationship to the National, uh, to the Wellbeing Future Generations uh, Act. I don't hopefully need to sort of labour the point that the Wellbeing Future Generations Act um, contains specific goals for sustainable development um, and is actually, in my opinion, um, changing the landscape of public policy development and um, the content of policy in Wales. My role, um, that of the Welsh Government, is to ensure that the planning system remains central and integral to the delivery of the uh, Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. It's essential that the planning system continues to be uh, in, the, in the centre of that wheel, delivering across all the objectives, um, and not sort of cherry-picking any particular one. And as I say, PPW is being updated to reflect the, uh, the changing legislative framework that we, we now find ourselves in. As well as the seven goals, I'm sure you're aware that there are five ways of working contained in the legislation, and they are uh, relating to working for the long term, prevention, um, integration, collaboration, involvement. All of these should be familiar terms to, to planners. We should have been doing this anyway. It's, I find very, very reassuring, I think, that um, this sort of language is coming through in other bits of legislation. The challenge may be for other public services, but I think the planning system is off to a flying start, and there's no excuse for us not to uh, embrace this fully. So in terms of what are we doing, well, I think the Cabinet Secretary's possibly stolen a little bit of my thunder. Um, we're, we said when the planning bill was going through the legislative, legislative processes in the National Assembly that we would set out the relationship between the planning system and the Environment Act and the Wellbeing Future Generations Act, all of which were um, being progressed on similar timescales. And to many, including the politicians down the uh, Cardiff Bay, the linkages and the connections weren't always clear. We produced a publication called the Planning uh, prospectus at the early, um, at, well, midway through all of the, the progression of these bills, seeking to set out what we would do. And in that prospectus, it said that we would factually, in the short term, update PPW. And that we did last year. Um, if you've read PPW Chapter 4, you will see the, the wheel diagram that I um, had on my previous slide. That's now in PPW. But in a way, that's simply box ticking. It doesn't actually... Um, go to the root of um, the, 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 the issue. And we said that we will, um, over the long term, completely restructure PPW. We will break it down to its component parts and we will rebuild it, brick by brick if you like, into a more coherent structure that clearly reflects the um, requirements of the legislation. So as I say, we've done um, the short term stuff um, and we are now in the process of that longer term commitment that we made uh, in 2015. So why are we, well as I say, I mean the Minister's given pretty much the headlines as to why we're, we're doing this. Um, we need to do it because as a Welsh Government we created the legislative framework that, um, that you all now have to operate in. Um, and so our policies, as along with any other public bodies, need to conform with the legislation. We need that clear um, connection with the legislative context to be, to, to be made up front. But we also need to go further than that. We need to demonstrate leadership as a government. If we are not taking it seriously, then we can't you know, legitimately turn around to anybody else and say, you need to take this more seriously. 
And I think by doing that, we hope to change practice within the planning system in terms of uh, understanding the requirements of the legislative framework. Uh, I don't want to teach my grandmother to suck eggs and say that nobody knows about sustainable development and that it's come as a bolt out of the blue. We all know what it is, but we need to be reflecting um, the, the, the ways of working and the um, goals in our in our day-to-day -day activities. As the Minister has indicated, we will use this as an opportunity to look at certain aspects of our national policy. Policies always kept under review. Revisions to policy come from various sources and not least political imperatives and as a, as a result of that the minister's already given you a hint as to the type of things that we will be looking at we will be looking at housing housing is an issue that is perpetually um, under the microscope um, we'll be looking at energy as well so when we do the re restructuring you will also see new parts to ppw as well and we will also use it as an opportunity to streamline the content of ppw over the years, planning policy has accumulated a lot of procedural stuff, a lot of stuff that's anecdotal, perhaps helpful, but isn't actually directly related to the policy document itself. And um, Mark will, will talk a little bit about some of the work that we are doing in terms of uh, the development plan manual, where we will be seeking to migrate some of the content that is currently in PPW um, that relates to the process of plan making and accommodating it more readily within the um, development plan manual. So the purpose, the, in the intention is not to just strip back PPW to its bare bones. If that happens, well that's what happens. We need to have a document that is coherent and usable and when we, um, when we were thinking about the structure of how we would do it, a lot of sort of thought going on in, in the team and within Welsh Government, well, why don't we just use the seven goals as the seven chapters for PPW? But as we'll hear later on today, it's not as simple as that. You can't shoehorn or pigeonhole some of the policy content of PPW discreetly into those goals. If you look at um, this diagram here, if you look at housing, for example, you know, it could very well sit under the cohesive community goal we want housing to be integral to the places that we live um, and it's very much part of our community fabric. But it's also about Welsh language as well in certain parts of the community. Having the appropriate um, sites and the type of housing is very important to um, the promotion and the preservation of the Welsh language. Equally, is it about health? We all need modern, efficient houses. We, there's lots of uh, academic uh, studies out there which show the strong correlation between health and poor housing. So it doesn't really fit in any one of those. Similarly with retailing, is it about being prosperous and um, having uh, you know, uh, uh, the ability to sort of create jobs? Or is it about the communities and keeping, pe keeping services and functions within, within the communities? And finally, the other example that I've picked up there is about biodiversity. And ask the question, is that about resilience? Is it about being healthy? Or is it about uh, global responsible? And it's actually all of those. So you'll see that it's difficult to sort of use the structure of the legislation as it currently stands to um, give effect to the national planning policy. So uh, where have we got to so far? I'm sharing some emerging thinking with you at the moment because we are currently testing this with stakeholders. Um, what we've decided to do as I say, is to reconstruct PPW from the basic principles, but in a more thematic way. Um, and we are clustering um, the, the, the discrete subject headings within PPW because we've done some analysis. We, we, uh, we did a survey earlier last year, and from that we understand that planners and, and stakeholders still like to see where the chapter on waste or the chapter on housing or, or wherever it is. They want to go straight to it. But we've sort of brigaded um, these um, topics under different clusters that, that we will be going. But primarily, um, we will be putting placemaking, people and places, at the front of this process. And that is kind of a big move for us, really. That's the non-spatial um, 
elements, I think, of, of what sustainable development is and how we go about doing it. So it includes things like design and... Um, um, you probably can't read the, the slide there, but about making choices about health and so on. So we need placemaking to be refocused and, and central to, 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 the, to the work that we're doing. And then after, it, after it's gone through that sort of process, we can then start going into the clusters. And we, the clusters we've called are distinctive and natural places, productive and enterprising places, and active and social places. All of these are up for discussion, by the way. There's nothing written in tablets of stone. The minister um, has not signed any of this off, so don't go writing to her about how you disagree violently with my, um, my, my assumptions today, because we are working this through as, as we go. And I guess in the, in the, in the spirit of the legislation, you know, we're, we're, we're quite open and receptive to, to, to thoughts and uh, views on this. But what this table shows is the strength of relationship between the clusters um, of, the, of the topics and the well-being um, themes that, that are down the left hand side there and it attempts to show that there are strong different correlations um, for different clusters as we, as we do it. As I said, place making um, it's going to be central, it's going to be the, the lens through which all the other stuff is seen in PPW. This is a new concept for us. Um, what we want to do is it's just not about counting houses, it's about the legacy of the places that we leave behind for future generations Placemaking has to be um, refocused and repositioned into this process. As I say, the people and places theme will consider this, and it sets out, uh, we will also set out the other drivers for um, change and for what creates sustainable places. So I'm going to show you a diagram now, which um, back in the office is called the eyeball diagram. And um, on the left hand side, you will see the drivers for planning. You've got the goals of the Wellbeing Future Generations Act, but the other things which we think we need to be mindful of are about the best use of resources, creating multiple <laughs> benefits from decisions, um, about um, creating communities, it's about accessible, accessible environments, and it's about supporting infrastructure, and encapsulated into that is the sort of economic viability in the case for understanding the, the, the way in which development uh, works. We see that funneling through the people and places, the place making, before it hits the other clusters of, um, of, of, of work. And then at the end, we hope um, that we will have made a contribution towards a legacy of sustainable places. If, the, if, if we've done this properly, then we should be scoring against all of the um, uh, goals that I previously mentioned were difficult to um, pigeonhole. So that is really where we are at the moment. It's very uh, quite early days. In terms of a bit of time scale, um, the team are holding uh, engagement events this week, next week, over the next few weeks with um, stakeholders to test this. Um, we're going to sort of, you know, do it in an open and honest way. We have no preconceived ideas that what we have done is absolutely perfect, and we are going to um, reflect, reflect and refine it. But what we've said to the Minister and what she said to you today is that we're going to consult on this generally um, in the spring of next year. So I guess if there's one date for your diary, you need to keep uh, you know, an eye on our website in terms of this piece of work coming, coming forward. So pretty much that reflects, I think, where we are on PPW. <coughs> Um, if I may, I will now just trot through very quickly the, uh, the work that we're also doing on the National Development Framework, um, because, as I say, they are parallel pieces of work, um, and you will see the connections as, as these are developed. So just a little bit of background, update on where we are. Minister spoke very clearly about the Prosperity for All National Strategy. That is the driving mantra for the Welsh Government, and we need to make sure that the NDF occupies the space that the national strategy is talking about. Helpfully for, for, for us, the NDF is specifically name-checked within that national strategy as a lever for the delivery of the Government's aspirations. Minister talked today about using tax and various other powers. NDF is a very powerful um, tool that we are working on, <coughs> and I... Um, I just want to leave you with, uh, finally with some 
dates again for your diary in terms of where we are going with all of this. For those of you that don't know what the NDF is, it's a product of the uh, Planning Wales Act. Um, it is a development plan that will cover the whole of Wales. It will have a 20-year horizon and it will replace the Wales Spatial Plan. Unlike the Wales Spatial Plan, the NDF will have development plan status. as a very diff different um, uh, type of plan. The Wales Spatial Plan had to have regard or the planning system had to have regard to the Wales Spatial Plan. The NDF is hardwired into the development plan hierarchy. It will sit at the top of the tree. There will be strategic development plans, hopefully, and local development plans underneath it. And the legislation requires those subordinate plans to conform with the NDF. So you really do need to keep an eye on the work that we're doing in terms of the NDF because it could have major implications for local and strategic development plans. The NDF needs to support the delivery of government policy, and I'll talk a little bit more about the uh, prosperity for all in a minute. It will identify the context for developments of national significance. Those are the planning applications that are deemed so important or so significant that they will be made to Welsh ministers. They currently relate to primarily to energy projects. Through the NDF, we have the capacity to identify new DNSs, if we feel that that's appropriate. And as I've said, um, it will set the strategic direction and tone for um, strategic development plans and local development plans. So this is kind of really, really important stuff um, for you and for us to get right, because it really will um, hopefully d drive the planning system in terms of the um, Wellbeing Future Generations Act and delivering sustainable development. So where are we? Well, some of you may have come to the open-ended engagement events that we held across Wales at the start of the year. Um, we had a pretty blank piece of paper, and we said to people, tell us what you think the NDF should look at. What, was the, what are the burning issues that people wanted to get into the, into the narrative that we wanted to sort of uh, take forward in the NDF? That was followed up by a uh, call for evidence and projects earlier this year. Um, and I think, if I remember off the top of my head, there were two key questions. Why is it something for the NDF and not for other plans? And how does it conform with the Wellbeing Future Generations Act? So people were challenged to give us that evidence as we started to think about what we were doing. We also commissioned some research, which is published on our, on our website from Cardiff University, mindful of the fact that the NDF needs to create space for strategic development plans. Um, and so we have published some research into um, what the regionalisation of the NDF might look, at, look like. Um, I won't go into too much detail about that. It's on our website. But basically, Cardiff University looked at a whole range of data sources in terms of um, crunching them together into a regional geography of Wales. We published that pretty much at the same time as the um, Mark Drakeford published his consultation on white paper for local government reform and thankfully there was a lot of overlap between the work that Cardiff had done and the proposals in terms of how the new geography of local government might work in, uh, in the future. Um, we have also commissioned the um, uh, integrated sustainability appraisal for the uh, NDF. Because the NDF is a plan and programme, it is caught by the SEA regs and because of the other requirements that the Welsh Government have, we are doing a whole package of um, assessments, such as the rights of the child or the Welsh language. There's a whole raft of them. They will all be done together in one um, integrated way. And at this moment in time, um, we are just going out to talking about the issues and options for the, uh, the NDF. Um, We've already started that engagement process and it'll be ongoing through the next um, couple of weeks where we have reflected on all the stuff that's been given to us and we have started to devise futures, scenarios, what worlds might look like if certain things were predominant. Um, there's a there will be a consultation on this in April next year. That's hardwired. That will be part of the um, uh, uh, delivery agreement that we have. So if you're not engaged in the um, stakeholder events, 
there's a date there for your diary in terms of making your views clear to us because once we've established the um, preferred strategy for the NDF, it will influence the content and the policies of the National Development Framework. As I've said, when, when the NDF is published, um, it will have significant weight and teeth within the, um, within the planning system. So please use the opportunity to become engaged in the exercises that we are uh, undertaking. Minister has already talked about Prosperity for All, published on 19th of September. This is the cross-government strategy. Um, as I say, helpfully from, from our perspective, the NDF is in there. But the, the words in the strategy kind of resonate with the legislation. They, re they should resonate with the planning system, really. We're talking about um, laying foundations for the longer term, looking beyond silos, avoiding strategies, although I'm going to write one, um, and um, you know, focusing on where um, the First Minister expects to see improvement. So it's, it's very much about breaking out of the departmental, subject-based approach into a much stronger pan-government approach, recognising that national government and local government have scarce resources and we need to work perhaps smarter and cuter, and that's something that we are always mindful of. The, um, the national strategy has four chapters. Um, they, the planning system, if you think back to the diagram that I showed at the beginning in terms of the wheel with what the planning system does, it should deliver on all of these to, to, a, to a greater or lesser degree. And the priorities for this government are early, health, early years, housing, social care, mental health, uh, skills and employability. Again, planning has some traction, some leverage over all of those um, as we go forward. Um, so we need to be clear on the Welsh Government objectives and cross-cutting priorities to help uh, the decision-making. And it's not about revisiting and going, uh, using it as an excuse for um, um, uh, starting new work. It's about integrating what we have, I think. Um, so just, again, Leslie Griffiths has asked you to read it. Um, it's not too long. Um, it might be well worth having a, a look at where the government, and that's the pan-government, so it will everything that the Welsh Government do, does has to align uh, to, to that strategy. I mentioned previously the uh, uh, regional work that Cardiff University have done for us. Um, this is an extract of the, uh, one of the ways in which we might want to cut the cake in terms of how Wales might look. Um, just as a reminder there, that this is a slide I think which has crept in, but it's about you know, the role of the NDF to coordinate government policy, the DNS, and setting directions uh, and space for strategic development plans. Uh, hopefully I've made that point ad nauseum this morning. My final slide um, today is, um, and I'll leave it there for a bit, it's about where all this is going. Um, as I said, in April next year, we will be consulting on the issues and options and the preferred options for the NDF. Once we've done that, we will start drafting the, um, the content. Um, by the summer of 2019, um, we will be consulting on a draft version of the National Development Framework. The way in which the National Development Framework will be published is not like a local development plan. It will be, the, it will be scrutinised by the National Assembly. The precise arrangements for that are yet to be determined, but in all likelihood, we expect the, um, it to be a subject of a cross-governmental, cross-assembly um, committee uh, scrutiny. The National Assembly will then um, give its report back to the Welsh uh, Ministers and it will be up to the Welsh Ministers then to publish the final version of the NDF which is slated in the um, delivery agreement for September 2020. Sounds a lot, uh, a long, may, may sound a long way off but it's not. Um, there's an awful lot to be done and some of the engagement that we will be taking will be fast-paced and agile and uh, we're looking at all options in terms of trying to keep up with technology and um, you know, use um, social media, etc. We have dedicated web pages on the Welsh Government's website which will set out everything that we've published and the um, course, of uh, course of actions that, we, that we're taking and so all of this will be um, on the Welsh Government's website. So thank you very much. That's um, I hope I've imparted information, but I really sort of hope that we take this forward in a, in a collaborative and co-productive way. Thank you very much. <laughs>